Rob Porter, as White House Staff Secretary, would normally need, uh, we think, a top secret, sensitive, compartmented information clearance, which has a lot of words in it because it's supposed to be intimidating, right? It's a very high level security clearance. Um, we now know that Rob Porter was not able to get that clearance. He was not able to get a permanent security clearance of any kind. We also now know that that's because of what his two ex-wives told FBI special agents who contacted them as part of the background check process for Porter. Porter's ex-wives say they both told the FBI about their allegations that Rob Porter was violent toward them in their marriages. Uh, supporting evidence reportedly included this pro a, a protective order that was obtained against Porter in Virginia in 2010, uh, plus photographs. Uh, plus what his second wife says was another contact with local police who she called to their home because of his behavior. A third woman who was also involved with Porter, though not married to him, is also reportedly working for the Trump administration. She hasn't been named publicly, uh, but multiple news outlets have described her going to White House counsel Don McGahn directly to discuss th these concerns about Porter, uh, her own concerns about Porter, and what she knew about Porter's ex-wives and their accusations against him as well. Now, we should note that Rob Porter denies the allegations. He calls them simply not true. Um, but this is not just a salacious and dark story about the departure of yet another high-level Trump White House employee. This is also a security story that matters to all of us, because this is a security story about how Donald Trump is running this government. White House employees don't get handed security clearances as perks, right? The FBI has to clear you for one after this, this rigorous background check process. And there are all sorts of ways to fail that process. This doesn't mean you're a criminal. Right? Some of them are, are dramatic, right? You can, you can fail the FBI background check process for a security clearance because you have undisclosed foreign contacts that you've been trying to cover up or you've been lying about, right? Those would obviously screw up your chance for a security clearance because they'd show that you could potentially be in cahoots with or, or be in hawk to some foreign government or some foreign government knows something about their contacts with you that you feel like you can't be straight about and they could use that to blackmail you, right? That's like, you know, that's the stuff we worry about about Jared Kushner not disclosing his foreign ties. Right. It can also be more pedestrian stuff. You could be in a lot of debt. Being deeply indebted, that's not a crime, but it might prevent you from getting a security clearance because that might give some bad actor or some foreign intelligence service a way to get at you. If you were in a lot of debt, they could conceivably offer you a lot of money to hand over information that you shouldn't. And you might be more vulnerable to that kind of an approach than if you weren't in a lot of debt. So it can be something like that. It could, it, could, it could also be something in your past or something in your personal life that you don't want people to know whether or not it is a criminal act. And so White House Staff Secretary Rob Porter with credible corroborated allegations of domestic violence against him and police records to back it up, he doesn't get a clearance. Now, once the FBI makes that determination that he's not going to get a clearance because of those reasons, they reportedly alert the White House to that fact. Now, we know separately that White House counsel Don McGahn was also alerted to the problem here. But the White House counsel and the White House chief of staff, Don McGahn and John Kelly, apparently sat on that information uh, and did nothing about it. They certainly did nothing to get Rob Porter out of that job. Or, or away from classified information that he was explicitly not cleared to see. When President Trump decided to ignore the fact that Jared Kushner couldn't get a security clearance, presumably that decision was made on the basis of the president thinking that he knows everything there is to know about Jared Kushner, Jared Kushner's family. The president felt comfortable blowing off the FBI's concerns about him, and he cleared Jared Kushner to see everything. But with Rob Porter, the White House is now letting us know explicitly that the president had no idea that there was any sort of problem with him. And yet, he put him in this job, he allowed him to continue in this job where he saw and handled every single piece of information that crossed the, class, the president's desk, including classified materials. Did the president not know? Did the president not know that Rob Porter couldn't get a security clearance? Did the president think that he had one? The White House Chief of Staff and the White House Counsel knew that Rob Porter couldn't get a security clearance, and they knew why. The White House tonight is putting out word that the president had no idea. So that's legally important. Who cleared this young man to see all this stuff that you need a top secret security clearance to see? Who cleared him to do it? FBI did not grant him a clearance.
did not provide information to the White House that said he deserves a clearance? Who cleared him to see all this stuff? I mean, it is disturbing and unprecedented enough that this president has decided to have blind faith in his son-in-law and give him access to classified information just as his judgment call. But with this Rob Porter situation, it's not even clear that this was the president's judgment call. This is a problem in the White House for the highest classified, for the highest level classified information that we've got. I mean, this is a systemic problem. If the president didn't know there was a problem with this guy's clearance, that means somebody provided that guy with classified information without him being cleared to see it and without the president waiving the clearance process. Isn't that illegal? Joining us now is Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. He's a Democrat of New York. He once served in the Clinton administration in the job that Rob Porter held until yesterday, staff secretary. Congressman, it's really good to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Good to be with you. Um, am I right to think that being the staff secretary means that you routinely handle um, highly classified information? Spot on. There is not a day that goes by that there are not a stack of red folders on the staff secretary's desk marked top secret. They're often above that level of secrecy, by the way. Top secret is actually where you start. They go all the way up to levels that are themselves classified. And there is a burn bag under the desk of the staff secretary because when you discard materials, it will be collected by a special team and incinerated that night. Uh, the staff secretary sees everything. I don't think people understand. The National Security Advisor, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, they don't give memos to the President. They give them to the staff secretary, and the staff secretary manages those uh, documents as they go to the Oval Office. You see everything. In terms of Mr. Porter, um, it has emerged as part of this story about his personal difficulties that um, that information was conveyed to the FBI and that information was conveyed to the White House. Even aside from this story about these domestic violence allegations against him, how unusual is it that somebody would be in the staff secretary position without a permanent security clearance of any kind, with just an interim clearance? Yeah, wow, that blows my mind, Rachel. Let me just tell you. When, let me just give you one example. When I was going through this background check, uh, the FBI sent agents from Montevideo, Uruguay, from their office there, to the small Peruvian village where I did social work with the Jesuits between college and law school. Hmm. They take this stuff seriously. They go through every address, every person you've ever lived with, every contact, and they ask you detailed questions going back, in my case, to when I was 18 years old. So the notion that you would, you would allow somebody to work this entire time with no security clearance is nuts. Now, if I may, normally you start and it's an iterative process. So they assume you can do the job and they're doing it quick while you're on the job. That's normal. But in this case, we know that they knew as early as January 2017, right up front, that this guy had issues in his background, wife beating, credible allegations of it, uh, that would have permanently disqualified him from holding this job. Um, and so why they even gave him an, an initial clearance is beyond me, because they must have known he would never have cleared the full background check. Now, as far as I understand how the security clearance uh, world works, there's the, the FBI background check process. Uh, if you're a, in, in the military or in some other part of the national security world, you may get your clearance through some other agency. But when you're just a civilian like Rob Porter was and you're working for the White House, it's actually the White House who grants you your clearance based on this background check information from the FBI. Therefore, it's sort of the president's decision whether or not to disregard the FBI's advice and clear somebody anyway. Is that is that the way it works? Yes, in an, in an extraordinary case, and maybe we'd expect that from the Trump White House. But as you point out, if the president didn't do this, um, it's nobody else's call. The, the, right. the chief of staff, I can't imagine the chief of staff making this call without informing the president. And there is no way you're going to convince me that somebody said, we're going to let the staff secretary to the president do the job without a security clearance and not tell the chief of staff. So the chief of staff was up to his neck in this, I'm sure. And, and he and the White House counsel would have been the first people to review this. And it, it, it really blows my mind that they would take on to themselves the decision to let a staff secretary work without a security clearance. And I'll tell you what else. There's going to be an FBI investigative report that should, should come out because we ought to know exactly what the FBI told uh, the White House counsel and chief of staff and when and what they said about it and did about it. If there, is a, if there is a potential criminal matter here in terms of mishandling classified information, if, this, if the president never made the call to uh, waive the 
basically waive the process and clear this young man despite the FBI's counterindications. If that never happened, if the president believed he was operating with a security clearance and that's why he could see this stuff, if somebody else cleared this to happen and put classified information in this young man's hands, who, would the FBI investigate that on their own initiative? Would there have to be a, would there be a congressional inquiry? Like how would that be, who looks into that? Well, I've written to the chairman of the Oversight Committee in the House, uh, Chairman Gowdy, to ask for an investigation of this. That's what that committee exists for, by the way. And we know their concern on, in the Republican Party for handling classified information because we were lectured about it throughout 2016. Hmm. So we ought, to, we ought to get to the bottom of this. But can I just back up? I mean, you're right to ask, ultimately, whether someone broke the law in, in extending classified information to someone not cleared by the president to see it and who failed their background check. But, but, but can we also just point out that they knew that they had a, a person in this sensitive position who was credibly accused of beating his, uh, not, not, his, not his wife, but both of his ex-wives, that those people had come forward, that there were police reports, and they made the decision to keep that person on the job, knowing those allegations and, and knowing he couldn't have a security clearance. What the hell is going on? What does that say about the value system of this White House and of these officials? And, 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 and that would be terrible. And then you add, even if you didn't have to add on to it, as we must, the fact that they, you then have someone who is eminently blackmailable, seeing our nation's top secrets. And then, as you point out, you may be breaking the law in the process. Because remember, the FBI would have asked him about these allegations. And I'd like to know what Rob Porter said to the FBI and that's why we need to see the investigative report. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney uh, who represents the state of New York. It served as staff secretary under President Bill Clinton. Really appreciate your time tonight, sir. Invaluable perspective given your experience here. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Much more ahead here tonight, including, uh, yeah, another government shutdown before you go to bed. All right. Sorry. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.